All right, so here is 3.2. And again, um, in 3.2, we're doing transformations of functions. I highly, highly, highly suggest using that graphing calculator you have uh, to graph these functions. Uh, all these functions, transformations means we're going to move them. We're going to slide them to the left, to the right, up, down. We may even stretch them or shrink them. Okay, so you're going to be able to see a lot of these by just graphing them in your calculator, and that's going to be your best bet, especially at this time since we're having to go a whole lot faster. I'd probably usually spend a full, full day with you, if not longer, on this. But since we're kind of squished on time, we're going to do this a little easier for you. So use that graphing calculator. These are your parent functions. Okay, we already talked about them. Okay, we talked about those uh, on the last session. This is quadratic parabola, your absolute value. Showed you how to do that in calculator. Any of these, when you know which function you're using, you're going to put this in the calculator first. Okay, and I'm going to show you one in a little bit. Okay, now transformations. This is your basic function right here. Okay, these are your function. This is your transformations of everything that happens. I like to go these a little bit different order. Okay. If it is a square, then you have a square right here, okay? Or right here, I should say. You have a square right here. If you have the absolute value, you'd have the absolute value bars, okay? If it's a square root, it'd have a square root symbol, okay? So it might be a square like that, okay? It might be a square root symbol. It might look like this, okay? All of this is always inside. If it's absolute value, it's absolute value. Okay? The D value, whatever number is in for D, is always on the outside. The C is always inside, and A is outside, and B, or A is out in front, and B is in front, but inside. Okay? So what do these things do? Okay? Well, you're going to notice when you put some of these things in your calculator how these things move. Okay? Your C value, whatever that C value is, how it's going to move left or right. Okay? So, if you have something like x minus 5, whatever, say squared, that's going to be to the right 5 because the value that's in here is positive. If I put a positive value in here, it stays a minus sign. See that minus? That's a very important. Okay? If it's x plus 5 squared, it's going to be to the left 5. Very simple. Okay? The D value is either up or down, okay? And so if it's X squared plus 5, it's up 5. Minus 5, down 5. Be down 5. Okay, now that is outside because the parentheses would be technically right there. Okay? Now, vertical stretch, vertical shrink. This A value, okay, if that A value is bigger than 1, okay, then it's going to be a stretch, okay? Now what does it mean a stretch? It's going to take the picture and it's going to pull it this way vertically, okay? If it's a fraction less than 1, like say 2 thirds, it's a vertical shrink, which will take the picture and shrink it vertically and push it down. Okay. Now, if your B value, this value, and we're not going to do a whole lot of those, if it's a, a B value and it is a fraction, like 3 fifths, it's going to be a horizontal stretch. In other words, it's going to take it and it's going to pull it this way. Okay. And if it's a whole big number, like 7 over 3, which would be bigger than 1, then it's going to be a horizontal shrink, which means it's going to take it and it's going to push it. Like a, If you think of a marshmallow, it would go out like this. Horizontal shrink is a lot like a vertical stretch. Now, you have also what's known as a reflection. If A is negative, not if it's bigger, not if it's a whole number or a fraction, just if it's negative, it's going to reflect across the x-axis. If B is negative, it's going to reflect over the y-axis. 
And remember, this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. Okay. So in other words, if it flips over the x-axis, if that's my x-axis, what's over here is going to go over here. Okay. If it flip, or this is the y-axis. Excuse me. What's over here goes over here. B is z negative. If A is negative, here's your x-axis. What's here is going to go over here. So what's here going to here? If it's here, it's going to go over there. Okay. And if you graph those, you're going to see those. Okay. Now, what you're going to be asked to do is try and find the transformations. Okay. Well, because of your calculator, we're going to be able to do some of these. Now, to show you what I mean by your calculator, what you're going to do is you're going to go to your y is equal to. And notice in y1, I put the parent function. Okay? That's my parent function. Nothing special is going to happen to that. Okay? So, whoops, I'm going to clear that out. And if you see that, you're going to get, if I graph that, there's my picture. Okay, and my window, I'm going to take my window, we're going to go back to our original picture. There's my picture. That's x, is e, uh, x squared. Now, when we go to y2, if we go down to y2, and we're going to put in parentheses, just like we see it, x plus 3. Parentheses, and we're going to square it. And what we're going to do, the transformation is what happened to the original function. And if we look here and we graph it, remember the original? And here's the new one. So what happened? Well, all these points all went to the left 3. And that's what we want you to be able to look at. Okay? You punch in the parent function. Okay? And then you punch the new one in. And basically what we have here is a left 3. Now, what happens if I go x squared minus 5? So what we do is we go back to our y is equal to. We're going to go down to y2 again. We're going to clear that one. We're going to put the brand new one in. x squared minus 5. And we're going to graph. Remember what our original one looked like. There's the original. And there's the new one. What happened? Well, they all went down 5. So everything's down 5. This is our c value. Okay, so if we look over here, if I have the absolute value, this is going to be a V shape. We looked at that before. Well, if it's inside and it's a minus 5, that's going to be a right 5. And you'll be able to see that on your calculator. If it's outside and it's plus, it's going to be an up 5. So then what happens when you do two things? Here's two things happening. Well, the 3... If it's a plus sign inside, that is a left 3. And minus 6 on the outside in the back is going to be a down 6. And you'll be able to see those as you throw those in your calculator. Okay. Now these last three here that I have in the notes, Okay. again, the parent function, if you wanted to see what happens here, this would be x cubed. And so the first thing you would put into your y function would be x cubed. And then punch this one in and see what happens. Well, this is outside and in the back, so this is going to be up 5. But what does this negative do? Well, that's the negative a value. So a is negative here, which means we're going to have a reflection over the y-axis. Or x-axis, excuse me. Okay, same thing here. This would be a reflect over the x-axis. That's that. Then we're going to have a left 5. And then the minus 3 in the back, down 3. Okay, and then this g function. Notice the 2 out in front. The 2 here is going to be a vertical stretch by a factor of 2, and the minus 3 inside would give me a right 3. Okay, So it actually pulls it and makes it bigger. Okay, Now, what's its parent function? Its parent function is the square root of x. So if to show you how that works, we go to y is equal to, and what we're going to do is we're going to clear both of them. 
So we're going to clear both because it's a different parent function. We're going to do the square root of x. Just remember what it looks like again. So there's the square root of x, right? There's the square root of x. Now to see what the transformation is, we go down to y2 and we plug in 2 times the square root of x minus 3. Close it. Those are all inside. And we're going to graph it. And notice how it moved over 3 to the right. And then notice how it's a little bit bigger because it's been vertically stretched. Okay. So, let's look at one more, and let's do a let's do a absolute value just to refresh your memory on how to do an absolute value. If I want to do the absolute value of x, remember we go to, whoops, let's go back up here. We're going to go to math over, and that's absolute value. Put x in it, and let's remember what that looks like. There's my v, right? So let's now go to y and let's go down and what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, let's do 1 divided by 4, that's going to be my a value, times the absolute value of x minus 5 close the absolute value, and then plus 7. Now what this should mean is a vertical stretch, or a vertical compression or shrink of one fourth. In other words, it's going to take the picture and shrink it by a factor of a fourth. It's going to make it small, skinnier, or um, shorter. Okay. This is going to be a right 5 and that's going to be an up 7. So when we graph it, there's the original. And notice, it came all the way up here. Here's this little point, vertex and vertex. That's going to be at 4, well, again, let's go back here, 5, excuse me, 5, 7. So this is going to be over 5, up 7. And notice how this V is a lot more eh, flattened out, right? If I was to zoom out, you might see a little bit better. There's the original. There's the new. Okay, and so you see how the way they change. Okay, so work with your those on your your calculator. It will be very helpful on dealing with those values.